Thanks for staying with us here on the Urban Debate. I am now going to bring in a topic which has been discussed in the past but is back in the spotlight because a plea has now been filed in the Supreme Court regarding the electoral value and the relevance of NOTA. Now, as you know, viewers, NOTA is the option that you can choose for none of the above uh, when you go to cast your vote but don't really want to choose any of the candidates. If none of the candidates of the parties really impress you, that's your option. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't really have much electoral value or any value in terms of deciding the outcome of elections in your constituency. So now, plea has now been filed in the Supreme Court. This plea essentially seeks to nullify the results if maximum number of votes actually go to the NOTA category. Instead of any candidate, if NOTA gets the maximum number of votes, then the plea says nullify those, election, uh, th those results Call for a fresh polls and not only that, this should be taken as a sign that the people have rejected these candidates. So these candidates should be barred, disallowed from contesting in the next round. This is essentially the plea that's been filed in the Supreme Court. The court has now, on the basis of this, admitted this plea and issued notices to the centre as well as the Election Commission. Now, while we are going to again explain, explain to you what NOTA currently means in our existing system and how it works. Let me tell you, uh, take example for the example of the 2014 general elections and data actually suggests that we got, saw a, the highest number till then, the highest number of NOTA votes come in at about 60 lakh, roughly 60 lakh people chose that option. In Chhattisgarh, 5% uh, of the votes went to this category. In one constituency in, in Tamil Nadu, in Nilgiri, almost 5% of the votes went to this category. That's about 46,500 votes. Uh, similarly, in Odisha, in one specific constituency, we saw about 4.3% votes go to this category. And there are several other examples that I'll bring to you over the next half hour that will show you that often it even becomes the, uh, the uh, option chosen second highest. And if that is the case, when people know that it doesn't have any impact on the electoral results. Imagine what could be the number of people choosing the NOTA option if they knew it could make a difference. So why don't we make it count? In, an, in a situation where we are already talking about the level of corruption, the level of criminal uh, uh, politicians who exist as candidates and how tickets are really distributed only on the basis of winnability but not on the basis of who that person is and what that person really stands for why don't we see this as a way of cleaning up our politics bringing on some good credible clean candidates the only way could be when people begin to send the message that none of these are acceptable to us and so we choose none of these why can't we do that can we look at that option that's the question i'm asking this evening to our panelists, let's say good evening to Professor Jagdeep Choker, founder member of the Association for Democratic Reforms, Aman Sena, spokesperson for BJP, also a senior advocate with the Supreme Court, Dr. Said Nasir Hussain, member of parliament of the Congress party. But first up, I want to go across to Dr. Qureshi, Dr. S.Y. Qureshi, former chief election commissioner, joining us this evening. Dr. Qureshi, what's your view? Can we give a little bit more power to this tool? I have a feeling that this will not stand a scrutiny of law because uh, if we say that uh, all these candidates are rejected, well, what is the basis for our saying so that because some of them are criminals, some of them have bad record. Suppose one of them is like, uh, you are the candidate and you have a clean record. You are the first, you have stood for the first time. On what basis can you be debarred from contesting? Uh, therefore, uh, a blanket uh, rejection of all uh, everybody it's uh, not feasible, but let us see. We'll keep our fingers crossed. Now, uh, this amounts to creating a right to reject, which is what uh, at once upon a time Anna Hazara was demanding, and we had rejected it. I had personally rejected it. So Anna Hazara and his team came to discuss with us, and uh, they tried to see me the other point of view. They said, you have been trying to uh, get the criminal candidates out of the election, you have been crying yourself hoarse for the last 20 years that nobody is listening to you. There uh, And they will not. The best is that through NOTA, eh, suppose somebody has spent 20, 30 crores in the election and they, through the uh, NOTA system, he is rejected and uh, disqualified. 
that is the time when uh, such a candidate will not be put up a second time. I thought that this was nice. This is the interesting logic, and I said uh, we can we can discuss that. Let us work out the operational details. But another interesting thing I would like to mention before I finish that uh, election commission, uh, although was opposing the creation of right to reject, but was in favor of nota for two totally different reasons. One uh, was that if you go to the polling station and you find your vote has already been cast, right? Or what used to happen was by four o'clock, every political party candidate will do a survey. Who are the people of, who have not voted? And if you haven't voted, they will put up somebody else. So idea was that you go there, you declare that the, you uh, exercise your uh, right, but at the same time, your secrecy had to be maintained. There was a rule that you go to the polling station and you say that I want to fill up a form that I don't want to vote for anybody. Now, this was a very risky and dangerous proposition because everybody will know that you have not voted. Now, imagine if you had a criminal candidate who is your neighbor, he will identify every single person who did not vote and he will come and beat you up. Supreme Court in the nota judgment mentioned this possibility of reprisal. That to guard against this kind of a reprisal, it is best that uh, not voting is anonymous. And interestingly, while su several Supreme Court judgments have said that right to vote is not a constitutional right, this nota judgment has elevated your right not to vote to the status of a fundamental right. So the, in such a situation, it is your right to abstain and that, that's all it is. And uh, right to reject uh, cannot be created out of it. That's my feeling. Okay, you, you know you, what you raised, uh, uh, um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Qureshi, is also very interesting, and I uh, and I wanted to highlight that as well to our viewers. Why did NOTA come about initially? And that was really to ensure that uh, you know, it, 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 uh, uh, rather than not turning up to vote. Uh, people go and may take make this uh, take this option if they want, but if they don't turn up to vote and somebody else, uh, you know, votes in 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 their place instead, that system had to be stopped. But as our technology also progresses, um, the the bogus voting goes out uh, of the system gradually, and and then I believe there needs to be a conversation on how do we ensure cleaner politics uh, and candidates. And Professor Jagdeep Choker. One aspect, of course, is legally, whether constitutionally this can be looked at. But why not at least say that, okay, let, let it have some value. At least let those that let that round of election be nullified and then hold a fresh round. Well, first of all, uh, let me say that constitutionally, as far as I understand and some other people understand, there is no bar to... Uh, debarring candidates who uh, were contestants where no physical candidate got uh, the highest number of votes. Uh, this is, actually there are several strands to this. The Supreme Court in its judgment has actually written the sentence that if more and more people use nota, political parties will be forced to put up better candidates. Now, Supreme Court does not use words lightly, and they use the word forced, not motivated or encouraged. So political parties continue to do this because this is an easier option to put up people who are uh, you know, winning candidates but who have dubious records. Not all cases, but there are quite a few, 43% of the members in the Lok Sabha today have criminal cases pending against them. So Supreme Court did say that if more and more people use NOTA, political parties will be forced to put a better candidates and it will result in a better, cleaner politics in the country. Now, that is the Supreme Court's intention. They did not put it in their direction that this must be done. And with due deference to my, my friend, Dr. Qureshi, the Election Commission of India went by the letter of the law and not the spirit of the law. They said a button is to be provided, button is provided. What is the point in providing a button if the button has no, no use? And uh, obviously, uh, several people, uh, former chief election commissioners have also said, 
if two, there are 2,000 voters and 1999 uh, vote for Nota and one voter votes for a candidate, the candidate will get elected. I mean, this, this is absolutely, it defies logic of any kind. So, number one, it is absolutely correct what has been raised in this petition. And let me now come to another example. Mm. So Central Election Commission is obviously the, the top body for parliament and state assembly and presidential election. In every state, there is a state election commission who do the elections for local bodies and panchayats. Now, at one time, the chief ele uh, state election commissioner of Maharashtra uh, decided to explore this matter. And after several uh, several rounds of discussions and so on, a notification was indeed issued saying that if NOTA gets more votes than any other candidate, uh, any physical candidate, then the mm. election will be nullified and a fresh election will be held. Now, despite our suggestion that the, in the fresh election, the earlier candidate should not be allowed to contest, the, the then uh, state election commissioner said, you know, that may not be politically acceptable. Let me see. We will do it in the next round. But a few months later, lo and yes. behold, the state election commissioner of Haryana, of which Dr. Qureshi is a very uh, senior and honorable member of that cadre of IAS in Haryana, the state election commissioner of Haryana issued a notification that if uh, Nota gets the highest number of votes, the election would be nullified, and none of these candidates would be allowed to contest. Now, that has been in force for, uh, I think, two years, and there has been no challenge to that, there has been nothing, it is working. So, the, I mean, I don't know where is the constitutional bar. You know, if the voters do not okay. choose any person, then okay, does so that person have a right? Okay, so let me let me ask Dr. Kineshi if he wants to respond before I go to our political representative. Yeah, just one point that uh, to say that the, this button is useless, I beg to defer with my friend uh, because it guards your secrecy. Now, secrecy is very important, which is what the Supreme Court emphasized. If you do not go, the candidate knows that you did not vote and he lost by one vote and that was your vote. He would come and beat you up. That's what Supreme Court has written. Therefore, you are abstaining from voting, but pretending to go and pretending to vote so that your secrecy is maintained. Now, who did not vote is guarded, and that is what the Supreme Court has written in the judgment. That uh, So, to guard against the reprisal, you should go and you pretend that you voted, and there will be a sound coming out of it. Everybody will think we voted. Because before the machine age, people used to uh, uh, put in a blank vote, or they would put a stamp in two, three places to make it invalid. And in some cases, they would write sub chore hai. So if you write something, in any case, it becomes invalid. Now, that option uh, having gone with the machine, so this uh, secrecy uh, element was brought in through that uh, this button, and it should not be discounted. Mm -hmm. No, I, I, Dr. Krishi, I don't think the debate would be about whether you take away that part at all and, and, and why it really came about. But what more can we do now that we have this tool in our system? Can it be used to, to, to bring about some more change and impactful uh, you know, change in the system? Aman Sina, let's start with you and then I'll go to Dr. Hussain. What is your view and your party's view? Should we look at this seriously to say, well, if at least a majority of people choose this, it should matter. Those elections shouldn't count. So, Tanvi, Supreme Court has issued notices today, and I'm sure Election Commission will respond. Other parties will also respond, and all views will be factored in. And whatever Supreme Court decides, the government will be fully agreeable and abide by it. However, certainly there are certain important legal questions which would emerge. That uh, supposing if uh, Nota gets more than 50% vote. Would it uh, lead to all the candidates being declared uh, illegal, invalid, and uh, ineligible for uh, uh, being set up as candidates in that particular election? 
So therefore, uh, these legal questions would need to be examined as uh, very articulately also explained by uh, Mr. Qureshi. And uh, Supreme Court, I'm sure, will go into depths and details of all these issues because it is not as simple as it seems because uh, uh, you also have to factor in the, uh, the other rights and the rights of candidates who are there, whether uh, they are being violated or not and uh, to what extent. However, certainly, let me say at the same time that as far as BJP is concerned, BJP, as you know, Tanvi has been one of the oldest and most vehement supporters of electoral reforms. And large number of massive electoral reforms have either been initiated or, uh, you know, they have been envisaged uh, by, by the BJP and the BJP governments when they have been in power. Even today, uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji has envisaged one nation, one election. And uh, certainly this is something which has been uh, on agenda, re electoral reform, so to speak. And I'm sure that uh, we will keep uh, uh, yeah. contributing towards the towards this, uh, you know, process of electoral reforms as far as this question is concerned, because uh, there are other views also which need to be incorporated. And therefore, only a structured opinion can be formed after factoring in all views. But certainly there will be... So what could questions. be the downside? Let me ask you this, Aman. I, I know you are playing it a little safe today and perhaps the government and the party also need to take a clearer stand now that this is in court, so I understand that. But what could be the downside to what we are saying? And and let me just now make a narrow it down and say, well, if, if the maximum votes are going to NOTA, then why should the one who is coming in second be the, the one declared winner? Tanvi, you have raised the question, it can be an ethical question, but it is also a legal question. Would it lead to disqualification of all other candidates? Mm. Under which provision of law? By what authority of law? So mm. therefore, these are the questions which would need to be answered. Because our constitutional scheme does not envisage that uh, other candidates are going to be disentitled from being set up because uh, no is exceeding 50%. So therefore, these are the questions which would need to be examined on a moral and ethical level. Your argument can have a lot of substance and there can be counterpoints also. But at the same time, first it should pass the test okay. of legal judicial scrutiny by the Supreme Court. But we are all, BJP, Fair I can enough. tell you okay. that BJP is all for electoral reforms. And I can also tell you, Tanvi, that notices have been issued, the government will formulate a view, election commission will formulate a view and come up with a structured opinion and file their affidavits before the Supreme Court. Yes, and, and, and you know, if it is, uh, as long as it's as per the constitution, if there's a need for a creation of law, and if that is what, you know, at some point the government has to look at, well, I would hope the government does. Of course, now it, it remains to be seen what happens in the Supreme Court. But let me take it across uh, to Dr. Syed Nasser Hussain. What is your view, uh, Dr. Hussain? Why should we not disqualify the people who've been rejected by the people? If the candidates have been rejected outright, haven't got the votes, why should they not be disqualified? Uh, Tanvi, uh, as we all know that... Uh... Uh, this is there in the Supreme Court and notices have been issued to the government and also to uh, the major political parties. Uh, my, my party has still not formed an uh, opinion on this. Uh, but I do agree that uh, uh, if uh, NOTA gets the maximum number of votes, then uh, 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 there is a confusion then what should be the situation. There are people who may argue that, that the, the, the election must be held, uh, should be nullified and that there should be a fresh election. But then how many, if it happens twice, if it happens thrice in the same constituency, what will you do? So I think this is the reason why it was debated and then uh, it was debated, in our, debated and decided in our country, the person who gets the maximum number of the polled votes or the maximum number of the valid, po polled valid votes and one who crosses the poll, uh, first past the poll kind of a system, where he will be uh, announced as the winner. So now if NOTA gets the maximum number of votes, uh, NOTA cannot be the winner, NOTA cannot be the candidate. Who is NOTA? So it is only as uh, Mr. Qureshi uh, uh, mentioned earlier, 
that is only giving a chance to a voter as to go and uh, exercise his or her vote and also at the same time say I don't agree with the candidate and my vote is invalid. So that is something which is there. Let the court take a call on this. Maybe if uh, maybe it, it will be uh, maybe the government can take it up take this up for discussion in the parliament also. Uh, but but again, it is not as simple as it looks. It involves lots of legal uh, questions. It involves uh, uh, how the election commissioner would like to uh, take a view on this and what has been the debates on this on the earlier occasions when the people raised this issue. I know it was raised about 10 years back, 12 years back. The similar kind of a uh, debate was there. So, see, all these things should be considered before taking a final call. Uh, our BJP spokesperson was mentioning about the electoral reforms in the country. I think we all need to uh, have reforms every 10, 20 years as mm -hmm. we, as the country progresses, as the democracy progresses. We need to uh, plug in, uh, plug in the holes, and then uh, have reforms. But that doesn't mean our reforms can be cannot be transparent. That doesn't mean that we can have reforms and the people of the country don't know about them. We cannot, uh, but we cannot have reforms and one particular party makes most use of it uh, in an indirect way. Uh, this is something which has to also be debated in our country. But at the moment, I would like to say that the Congress party has still not formed yes, an opinion. Yes, but this is not one of uh, those let things. Let the uh, Supreme Court take a view on this. Okay. And let the government also take a view on this. But, okay, but I, I mean, I would... Okay, let me also tell our viewers that the plea actually was filed by a Supreme Court lawyer and BJP leader Ashwini Upadhyay uh, representing him as senior advocate Menika Guruswami. Uh, and at, uh, when the plea was heard, the um, Chief Justice Bobde asked the petitioner if some political party with influence on people manages to get candidates rejected, then the seats will remain unfilled in the parliament. This is a constitutional problem. If your argument is accepted and all the candidates are rejected, then that constituency goes unrepresented completely. How will you consider, uh, constitute a valid parliament? To which uh, uh, you know, the lawyer replied, the very fact that you will have a right to reject will lead the political parties to get acceptable candidates. And then the Chief Justice of India said, well, underlying suggestions are very hard to be accepted, even though we understand the importance of what you're saying. So before I take it back to Dr. Qureshi, Professor Choker, will this be a concern that will have to be looked at? But if we say that hold fresh elections with fresh candidates, won't that solve the problem of you know, empty parliament seats? Let me respond to a couple of points that have been made before, before I come to your question. It has been said that the constitution, constitutional scheme does not provide that uh, candidates be barred from contesting if Nota gets the highest number of votes. I would very respectfully submit constitutional scheme does not even provide Nota. There is no mention of Nota in the Supreme Court in the constitution. So Nota has been brought in by the Supreme Court because there was a need for it. And I totally agree with Dr. Qureshi that secrecy is one issue. And that is okay. I respect and honor that. But so is the question of representation. Now the question is, a lot of legal questions will come in. The What is an election meant for? to get the opinion of the people on the candidates, unfortunately, selected by political parties at their women fancy. There is no process of selection. So if the voters have said that we don't want any of these candidates and you put them up again and again and again, this is a negation of public opinion. And the election committee, the law, Supreme Court wrote that parties will be forced to put up better candidates. So there is, I don't see any constitutional or uh, rights to contest. Right to contest is not a fundamental right. And right to contest after rejection, to my mind, does not exist. So therefore, and the other constitutional scheme, part of the constitutional scheme is that Article 3 to 4 gives the election commission the power mm to do what it wants in an area where there is no law. If there is an existing law, election commission has to follow it. 
But if there is no law, then election commission has full liberty to take whatever appropriate action that it thinks to get free and fair elections. And the state election commissioner of Haryana has done exactly that. Now, right. I don't know why our central election commission is, is so cautious. Uh, though now coming back to your question, the, the response to the Honorable Chief Justice is very simple. Uh, you, how can a constituency go unrepresented? The, if the nota is the, the so-called winner, somebody said, who's nota? Nota, my friends, is an artificial person. Like in the Companies Act, a company is an artificial person. So is nota an artificial person, a legal uh, fiction of a candidate? So if that happens, then obviously after two weeks, you can have a fresh election. As a matter of fact, in 1999, the Law Commission wrote in their report, they said that this currently might be difficult because we use paper ballots, but as is being speculated, we will have electronic voting systems, then it will become easier to do. So I don't see any problem that if one okay. seat remains unfilled for two weeks, heavens are not going to fall. So I really think the... Okay, the, let me get in Dr. Qureshi also on this aspect. Dr. Qureshi, can, can we now... Okay, one aspect is to say, well, there is nothing existing in the law. How do you disqualify, uh, you know, candidates uh, if, if NOTA gets the maximum votes? Well, we can bring in a law if that's what the, you know, if all parties agree or if that's what the Supreme Court wants. But are there any other concerns that one, could, one needs to look at? Uh, Tanvi, my concern is that uh, uh, we have to understand what NOTA is. NOTA is actually a blank vote and a blank vote and invalid vote. Now, yeah. how can blank votes, the, you know, there are 2,000, 3,000, 5,000 uh, invalid votes which could be blank or double stamped or uh, smudged. Now, uh, on that, uh, we cannot give uh, that. Pardon? I am sorry to interrupt, sir. Nota is, after the Supreme Court judgment, Nota is not an invalid vote. Nota is an invalid vote because it, uh, as you uh, yourself mentioned, suppose 100 people come and vote, 99 uh, vote for Nota and one vote for Mr. Jagdeep Chokar. Jagdeep Chokar is the only valid vote and therefore he is a declare, he's declared a winner. All others are blank That's votes. It. Now, they are all blank votes. Now, blank votes surely on... Uh, on the basis of blank vote, nobody can be declared elected or defeated. I mean, the, this definition but, of blank uh, what, The point that, that uh, is being made is, uh, Dr. Qureshi, if a majority of people actually <clears throat> choose the option of blank vote or invalid vote, they, they are also sending a message that I don't want any of these candidates. I don't want yeah. any of the people that you've projected to me uh, as a candidate for my constituency. I reject them all. And should that message also not be counted in in, in a democracy, in, in, in our parliamentary setup? Should we not and look at that kind of a method? Completely running out of time, but quick comment from Aman Sinha on it. And Aman, now I'm asking for your... Yes. So, Tanvi, therefore, yes. I would Aman, say quick comment from you. I'm now asking for your own view on this. Not about existing laws, but about bringing about a change. Well, Tanvi, if there is uh, any political consensus on uh, any nature of reform, then certainly I'm sure political parties will consider it. But as of now, whatever is being suggested runs against the grain of representation of People's Act and also rules there under. And therefore, I feel that Supreme Court is certainly bound to examine the legal validity of this. The ethical and moral argument is all very, very good. But sure. we have to find ways of making our democracy work, not of making it unworkable. So therefore, uh, party will formulate a view, will structure an opinion and certainly, <laughs> you know, put it before the Supreme Court. Okay. But in my assessment, we are a diver very diverse so let's, nation. So, so once the centre responds and the election commission responds, it was to make uh, our democracy work, not to make it unworkable kind of.
Yes, but the democracy is unworkable even when you line up uh, all equally, you know, incorrigible, corrupt, dirty, criminal candidates for us to choose from. That is not helpful at all either. And if the people believe that the I options that can, have been given to them are not good enough options, that I believe, I believe is a message that needs to be factored in a democracy. How often now and more and more often, uh, you know, we, we hear, we hear from voters who are standing in queues to cast their votes, unable to make their mind whom to choose. And when you ask them why is that, they say, well, you know, none of them are good enough. And this one was with that party before he joined the third party. And that one was with the, this party earlier. And they're all the same guys who are doing the rounds and jumping party to whoever gives them a ticket. No ideology, no performance report card, nothing to their credit basis. What am I choosing these people? And if the political parties by themselves cannot bring about a course correction, cannot bring about reforms and, and, and clean up the, the, their own candidate list, then let the Supreme Court step in and the Election Commission come along and bring in a set of laws and rules which are needed to ensure that happens. Something must be done. If the message from the voters is they're all rejected, that must be of some value. Otherwise, in today's day and age, NOTA has simply been reduced to Another name there on that EVM machine that nobody chooses. Thank you for joining us on this conversation.